Hello everyone. In this video, we will see what are embedded help and why are they used in service now and how can we implement them. Welcome to my YouTube channel and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. This is how we will be going in the video. We will be discussing what is an embedded help, why do we need an embedded help, how can we implement that using a demo and also we will be discussing about qualifiers using the demo as well. Link to each of these topics is given in the description. If you want to skip that part and go directly to demo, you can do that as well. What is an embedded help? Embedded help is a role based targeted help for applications. If you want to provide a help on some specific application on a form or on a list, you can use embedded help. So users will not have to go somewhere else in the knowledge article and search for them or go to portal and search what are incidents, how can we create them, what are the best practices. All of that embedded help could be provided on the same page using just a toggle bar, which I will show you in a second. Basically, you will be giving additional information for that page where the user is currently on. Why is embedded help required? As I said in the previous slide, we can provide additional information to the end users how to fill the form if they have any doubt on any of the specific field that what to fill here they can use that embedded help secondly you can provide help in multiple languages so it's just a text help you can paste anything chinese japanese or any language you want to and the users would be able to use that help additionally you can provide knowledge articles by providing links in the embedded help and you can display content based on the role of the user for example if you want to show a different help on incident form for admins for itl users or for incident managers or even for major incident managers you can display different help for each and every role and Finally, the query parameter and if you want to display a different help based on the query parameters of the URL, you can do that as well, which we will see in the demo also. Next is how to implement the embedded help. So you can show the embedded help on the list view and the form view. Let's quickly jump to service now and see how that looks. I'm on service now here and this is a list view. And if I click here on the show help, this is how you can go ahead and search for embedded help if it is available for a specific list or a specific form. So if I click here, now this is the form view. And if admin would have configured it out of the box, the help for that form view would have come up here. In the demo, we will be creating embedded help for the list view and form view of the incident form. And you can see in the first use case, we'll be creating it for only admins on the list view of the incident table. And we will be showing this content. This is help for list view of incident form. Let's quickly jump to service now and see how can we do that. I will type embedded help and under that I will click on help content. I'll click on new and I will give the name of that embedded help. For example, I can give incident underscore list underscore help. And this is the interesting part, how to differentiate between the embedded help of the list view and the form view, which can be done using this field. You will have to type the name of the table. In our case, it would be incident and underscore list. Underscore list signifies that this help is for the list view, which can be found on the list view of the table as well. If I type here incident dot list, you would be able to see that incident underscore list here and for your tables it might be on the change request table so that would appear as change underscore request underscore list you can see here on the top in the url it's given as incident underscore list this is what basically we have typed here and currently we don't have any help on that i will go back here i will keep the mode as normal i will change the role to admin and I will make it available for all versions of service now. And here I will give the content. This is the help for list view of incidents. I will submit this and this help should be available on the list view. I will come here and click on refresh button. And let's click on show help now. 
and we can see here the help for the list view is updated as we had configured on the embedded help. Now for the second use case, we will be creating embedded help only for admins on the incident form view and we will change the text slightly. I'll again come here. I will type the name of the embedded help as incident underscore help underscore form. I will give the name of the table here. So you have to give the backend name of the table. In our case, it's incident again for problem. It would be problem for change. It would be change underscore request and so on. I'll again restrict it to the admins. Make versions as all. And I will give the content as this is help for form view. And I'll submit this. I'll go back to the incidents. I'll click on one of the incidents and here when I click on show help, it will show me the newly created embedded help. This is help for form view. If you would have noticed here on the content, you can make the content as bold italics. Maybe you can use the bulleted list or the numbered list or also you can add the link. So you might want to add link to a YouTube video or maybe to a knowledge article. Interestingly, you can also add a video here. Maybe if you want to add a YouTube video, you can do that as well. But if you notice the pictures or the images are not supported as of now until the Tokyo version. So our third use case is creating an embedded help using qualifiers. So why do we need qualifiers? For example, if you want to show embedded help based on different query parameters, like in the URL, we have this ID equals to minus one or maybe based on some view or maybe other query parameters which are available on your service. Now you can change the embedded based on those query parameters. So in this third use case, we'll be creating a qualifier for the incident records, which are new. Why this use case would be used is when somebody is creating an incident for the first time and they will be on the new form where they might be confused with the few of the fields that what has to be filled here, why it is here and all. So you can configure the embedded help for a new form differently and for the existing recalls form differently. Let's see it in service now. Now to create embedded help based on qualifiers, we'll have to create a qualifier first. I'll click on help qualifiers. I'll click on new and here in the path, I have to give the backend name of the table, which is in our case, the incident table. And here we have to give the query parameter sys underscore ID equals to minus one. So as you might know, if you are creating a new record, the sys ID of that record is always minus one, which is displayed on the query parameters in the URL. For example, if we are creating a new help qualifier, the sys ID is minus one. And this is the encoded code for equals. It would be similar for all the tables like incident change and so on. If you notice, there are other query parameters as well as this embedded help reference qualifier, sys checked items and so on. So you can create embedded help for each and every query parameter separately and the embedded help for those will be displayed separately. And finally, we have to give name of this qualifier. I can go ahead and say incident qualifier. I'll copy this. I'll submit. And as soon as this qualifier is created, we will go ahead and create a help content again. I'll click on new. I will paste the name of qualifier here. And then make it all and I can say incident underscore help underscore new. I will give the backend name of the table incident and I will restrict it only to admins and I can give the content here. This is help for new form of incidents and I will correct this and submit. I will go to my incident screen and I will go on to the list and I will try to create a new incident here I'll click on new and let's click on show help. And you can see this is help for new form of incidents. So we are displaying different messages for the new records and for existing records. If I click on an existing incident and click here on show help, this is help for form view, which we had created. Let's also test for other users. 
the help shouldn't be available to them for that i will impersonate as the idl user for example and open the incident list view form view and the help shouldn't be available for them i'll go to incident dot list and i'll click on show help and we can see there is no help on the list view and also on the form view i hope this video was helpful to you and you would have learned something new please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button if you have any questions please let me know in comments thanks for watching the video